Hello there folks uh, today we are making a small documentary on our travel to Mumbai to Lonar and uh, this is uh, especially important for people who love bikes who like to explore unknown things mysterious things and who like to travel so let's start so me and my friend Sheldon D'Souza my companion my rider companion we are leaving to Lonar Crater using our Duke bikes one is a 390 the one I'm riding is a 390cc it was newly launched and uh, I would like to tell you that this video was recorded uh, five years back which is not a latest video this uh, was recorded when the Duke 390 the first series entered uh, serial production in India and reached consumer market in Mumbai so so we used a Duke 390 and a Duke 200 for this ride and the total uh, distance from Mumbai to Lonar crater is around 491 kilometers and it would take around 11 hours, uh, approximately 11 hours to reach Lonar. So we start uh, taking our recording. We start our recording from uh, Mumbai Nasik Highway. So this is the first time I'm riding the Duke 390 and uh, I feel it's it's, it's a beast of a machine mm, it's like very quick you can see uh, the road how how fast it's moving so 0 to 100 is barely 7 seconds 6.5 to 7 seconds and uh, you can reach the top speed of around 170 kilometers it pushed in the right way by crouching on the bike um, currently I'm traveling at around 120 130 kilometers per hour and the bike is very very stable at high speeds even a small undulation on the road uh, doesn't uh, matter much because of the uh, with the strong suspension it has and uh, yeah it heats a bit uh, that's a problem but uh, it's manageable if you wear a knee guard and a good uh, jeans or a cargo pant and a big socks which reaches to your knee I think you're well protected and uh, what happens is uh, it only gets hotter this is uh, remember this is the first generation d390 so this gets hotter only if uh, you are snailing around in the city but uh, you won't feel the heat uh, when you're riding fast on the open highway because uh, the wind blast actually cools the bike pretty quickly and uh, we did this journey during uh, the start of the winter, maybe November, October, maybe October or November, and uh, it was pretty cool. So the engine heating was much, uh, was not much of an issue for us, and yeah. So talking about the Duke 390, it uh, has 44 horsepower. And around uh, 35 newton meter uh, newton meter of torque, and uh, the fuel efficiency of this bike uh, when it's in the first edition was uh, around 30 kilometers on the highway and uh, around 22 kilometers on the city. So in combination, you get around 28 kilometers easy, and uh, you can expect 30 kilometers if you actually cruise and uh, do not. Uh, try to gun the throttle too much it does very well uh, 
at slow speeds and you can engage the sixth gear above 100 and you start cruising so remember guys uh, this is the first uh, series of the Duke 390 in India so it was like in the, it had a better grunt compared to the newer version uh, insane pickup for Indian roads you feel that it's it's the best so look at the speed now I'm around crossing around 100 plus my companion in front he's my wingman I need to follow him so even he is uh, using his full potential of the 200 and being a little bit heavier side this is a little less maneuverable than the Duke 390 and the engine response of a Duke 200 is remarkable so I would say that it is a fair bit difficult uh, to control a 390 compared to a 200 200 you are much more confident but on a 390 uh, you have to be uh, really careful gunning your throttle so yeah that's how it goes so let's talk about our journey uh, we are going to lunar equator and uh, it's around uh, 11 hours uh, from Mumbai it's around 491 kilometers from uh, Mumbai and the route is exactly I'll, I'll tell you the exact route how would we go so if you if you have to cross uh, take uh, go, go to Thani and then take the Mumbai Nasik highway so first uh, you would be crossing Nasangao uh, the Kasara Ghat Igatpuri then you reach Nasik so uh, to tell you all we're using the Duke 390 we reached Nasik from Mumbai um, uh, from Mumbai to Nasik in just barely two hours uh, used insane speed and then from Nasik to um, Ahmedabad sorry from Nasik to Aurangabad I always get confused between Ahmedabad and Aurangabad so from Mangarangabad you need to take the Jalna route towards the Jalna district and that would take you to Lonar Crater. So if you see on this highway uh, I'm, I'm in a Jalna district now uh, you, so first uh, uh, when you started off you saw Mumbai Nasik highway and now we have we have crossed Nasik, we have crossed Rangabad, uh, and we are going towards Jalna district. So on the left you see a nice uh, bridge, a very good scenery when you're entering Jalna. And the roads are okay, not too good, not too bad. Uh, it's a two-way road. Make sure that. Uh, you keep an eye on the incoming traffic so make sure that you are on the far left side of the road because even if uh, uh, there is any vehicle trying to overtake you can actually be on a safer side of the road and you have a little room to maneuver before any incident happens so yeah so uh, we are using a HD ghost camera and uh, no gyro stabilization in this so you would see the image very shaky but uh, the quality was good enough for its time uh, and yeah so talking about the lunar crater I'll give you some brief about lunar crater mm. It's a significant uh, archaeological area. Uh, lunar is also lunar. A uh, lunar crater is also known as Lunar Lake. It's notified uh, a National Geo Heritage Monument. Uh, 
It's a saline soda lake uh, located in the Buldhana district, Maharashtra. And uh, about the creation, Lunar was created by a uh, asteroid collision with Earth uh, with the impact uh, maybe during 50,000 years back. It is one of the four known hypervelocity impact crater in a blastic rock, basaltic rock, I'm sorry. So what I mean by hypervelocity is that uh, it was like it, when it impacted onto Earth, it was at a very, very high speed. So yeah, now we reached the lunar crater finally. I'm very tired. And here is the view of the lunar crater. It's around 1.8 kilometer in diameter. The crater ring a rim is around 1.8 kilometer. And the other three basaltic impact structures are in southern Brazil. Lorar has a mean diameter of 1.2 kilometer and is about 137 meters meter in depth. So the meteor crater rim is around 1.8 kilometer in diameter. And the lake was first mentioned in the ancient, uh, about the history of the crater, the lake was first mentioned in the ancient scriptures such as Skanda Purana or Padma Purana. Mm. Um, about the history of the lake, it is. It was first visited by. Uh, it was first European. The first European to visit the lake was British officer J. E. Alexander in 1823. Once a part of the Mayunan Empire and then the part of uh, Satavana Empire, the Cholakya, Chalukyas also ruled this place. During the period of Mughals uh, and the Yadavas and the Nizam and the British trade proposed in the area, several temples are found in the periphery of the lake. Uh, and some information on the lake is uh, there is a small circular depression at the distance of around 700 meters from the main lake believed to be caused by a splinter of a meteor that hit the ground and also makes a crater. There is a small, smaller version of this crater. Uh, there is a Hanuman temple near this lake with the idol made out of rock and it's highly magnetic. If you take a compass over here, it will just swivel around, round and round. This lake is sometimes also called the Chota Lonar Lake, which uh, was made because of the splinter. The chemical characteristics of the lake shows two distinct uh, regions that do not mix with the outer and the inner alkaline. So what I mean is the outer ring has a pH level of 7 and the inner ring has a pH level of 11. The deeper you go, the pH level increases. The lake is uh, a haven for a wide range of plants and animal life. Uh, residents and migratory birds such as uh, black winged stilts, Brahmani ducks, shell ducks, uh, blue jays and magpie robins. Among the reptiles you would also find, if you're lucky enough, you might also find a monitor lizard uh, which is prominently seen by the locals in the area. There are, uh, there are, there are, it's, uh, the whole place is a home for thousands of peahogs, chinkaras and gazelles. And the area of 3.83 km was declared as a lunar wildlife sanctuary by the government on 20th November 2015.
Well, that Lone Wolf Lake appears uh, green for most of the year due to the presence of dense bloom and cyanobacteria present in the water. Uh, the color is uh, due to this fungi which grows. It makes the color bluish, blue, and green. The most temples around the lake, and most of it stands in the ruins today, except for the temple of Daitya, in the center of the lunar town, which was built in honor of Vishnu. Victory over the giant Lonsor is a fine example of early Hindu architecture, mm, and it's pretty good. Uh, what I would like to say here is. There are a lot of threats caused in the Lona Theatre. Oh, I look high. Uh, so, me and my wingman, Sheldon D'Souza, we just had enough of Lonar history. So, we are getting back from Lonar. We just had two Red Bulls because we are too tired and we are returning back to our hometown Mumbai so uh, guys I uh, could not give you a lot of uh, video on Lunar because my uh, camera was acting a bit weird maybe because of the magnetic uh, zone or I don't know what but it was not functioning properly so now when it is maybe maybe the heat the heat was very high I didn't know if it was recording because the screen just went back out and here we are riding our 390 back so so it takes around nine hours, uh, eight hours to reach, eight one day to go and one day to come, and for the whole trip, uh, uh, we had halted in Aurangabad for a day, and yes, and we are coming back using the two rockets, pocket rocket, which we have. Mm. And I tried to use uh, the maximum out of this bike while coming to understand uh, its dynamics. If you see, uh, now I'm, I've crossed around 150 kilometers per hour. Uh, guys, I would, uh, I'm using the gear and uh, I have been riding since last 10 years, 10 to 15 years. And with experience, uh, I'm trying to boost the speed which is not legal but just to show the performance I temporarily do that now if you see the Duke 3, uh, 200 is also a, a fine bike I would uh, I would have a better control uh, on a Duke 200 uh, rather on a 390 so the pros of a Duke 390 is it is uh, more powerful than a Duke 200. Uh, slightly better road grip because of the Mesler tires. It's a sticky compound. It has good grip once it heats. But what I noticed with this uh, Mesler tire was when the road gets too hot and if you're riding too long, the tire feels a bit gooey. I don't know. It, you don't get that. Uh, that great of a confidence while riding it because uh, maybe the tar gets too hot tar in the tire gets too hot and it feels a bit jelly uh, underneath so yes uh, maybe it works best uh, during early morning in cold conditions when the tire heats up because if the tire heats up more than required uh, it feels a bit weird so we are on our way back from Lonar Crater. I'm sorry guys, uh, I'll try to get 
another video uh, of Lunar which would be better uh, in depth view because uh, riding our way to Lunar was very tiring and we were too tired to just get down and see how the place is because uh, it's a steep uh, decline towards the lunar crater and you feel uh, really tired and even climbing up is around uh, one one and a half kilometer so we had to conserve our energy to return back home so maybe next time when we go or oh, when i go i would surely get you all a better view of lunar and we are in we are currently on uh, the Kasara Ghat and we are sprinting towards the city and yes so uh, the mountain ranges over here is really very good it's smooth cover mm. yeah so we are talking about the bikes both the bikes performed really well no performance uh, sorry no breakdowns as such performed really well and uh, we used uh, uh, speed fuel so it has some it has some additives and um, we made sure that uh, we have filled fuel from reliable sources because if you fill bad fuel uh, you might end up with a seized piston so yes so guys over here I'm trying to race with my friend Sheldon here I've unleashed the whole all the potential of the Duke 390 you can look at the speed I've crossed around 160 kilometers an hour and it is ballistic it is truly ballistic it just rocket passes everything everything seems to be just stationary and you just zip pass and Sheldon again competing he loves his Duke 200 look at him he is just crunching the road effortlessly but over here I have to put a lot of effort riding this beast because uh, you know Indian roads are unpredictable uh, you can encounter a buffalo, a cow, a dog a fool coming from the wrong way anything is possible so the best part about this bike is it's equipped with uh, anti-lock braking system in an emergency it can we can hold the bike really quickly look at the skyline over here it's the, the rays of the sun is just penetrating through the clouds and it's beautiful and yeah we will be reaching Mumbai in, in two hours or so and I'm not covering Mumbai traffic and uh, on the whole video I've just covered uh, open highways because I want uh, you all to have a pleasant video rather than seeing everyday traffic on a YouTube video so guys that's all about it and our journey was fantastic and I would recommend everyone to visit Lonar at least once in their lifetime it's 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 something different it's extraordinary it's just out of the uh, mythological books or like you can see history mythology science everything in one place there's uh, very less uh, of our population knows about it so my video was just to tell you that how far is it what are the bikes which we used, the performance envelope of our bikes and the place. So thank you guys. Uh, and you have a great day. Please do subscribe, like the video and do comment. Thank you very much. Bye.